Last time we explored how to use some of the basic components of Stripe apps. Today, we're gonna to look at adding a backend to your app. In case you're wondering why you'd want a backend, consider use cases like authenticating into your service, performing some business logic, which you wouldn't want to do on the client, or making some third-party API requests on the backend with your secret keys. We'll start fresh with a new Stripe app project. If you aren't sure how to do that, please take a look at the previous two videos in this series. So let's jump straight back into the code. Here I have a fresh Stripe app project, which I just created. I've added a couple of things though that I'll walk through first. First, I created a new package.json file in this backend folder, which is new inside of our source folder. Inside here, I added a couple of dependencies, cores.env, express, and node fetch that you can install with either yarn or npm. I've also changed the type of this to be a module so we can use ESM rather than CommonJS. Finally, I've also added environment of variables at the very root of the folder. And here I have a Stripe API key where I've put my secrets test API key that you can find in your dashboard and something called the Stripe app secret, which we'll get to a little bit later. Let's go to the server that I created earlier. In here, it's very simple. I'm just I'm importing all the different modules that I have imported or that I've installed. I've created a new instance of the Stripe library. We're using this process and Stripe API key. And I have my Stripe app, which now should be running. So let's test that out. I'll just run in here. I'll say uh, node source backend server. There we go, my server's running, but it doesn't do anything, so it's kind of useless. So let's fix that, close the terminal. So we're gonna say here app.get, and let's first start with something very simple. We're gonna start with a route that simply does a check to see if the Stripe API is up or not. This is a little silly because we're gonna be working from the Stripe dashboard, so I don't think the Stripe API will be up if the dashboard was running, but anyway, this is a great little example. So we're gonna say health check. Next, we're gonna pass in a function, which is gonna be request response, like so, this function. This one we're gonna do is just console.log say request receive, just to debug a little bit to make sure that it actually works. Next, we're gonna make a request to an external API, in this case, the Stripe API. So we're gonna say is Stripe up. And this, which is going to be an asynchronous function, so let's make sure we say async over here. We're going to await a fetch, and this time we are going to hit the Stripe API. We're going to hit their health check, and we're going to return just the status text, because that's all we really care about. If it says OK, that means the Stripe is up, and if it's anything else, that means Stripe is down. So let's just log that out. We'll say console.log is Stripe up just for our own sanity. And then let's respond with res.send a status, which is, is Stripe up. All right, let's save this and move over to our front end code. Let's start by adding some state, which you might've noticed from a previous video. It's gonna use a very simple React hook called use state. So let's say we want Stripe status and set stripe status equals use states. It's gonna be a type string and we'll default fold it down for now. That'll make more sense later. Next, let's create a function. We'll call it get status. Uh, it's just gonna be a synchronous function and then we're gonna call it down here. I always forget to do this. So I rather put it in here now. Then in here, we're gonna say const status equals await fetch. And this time we're gonna fetch from our local backend. So we're gonna say HTTP, just HTTP because this is running on local, doesn't have secure security. And we're gonna type out localhost 3000. Now we're using the full path here because we're calling this from the Stripe dashboard, not from our local host. And health check. I'm gonna pass in some options here. Our method is get, and we want some headers. Specifically, we want the content type. We want that to be set to application JSON, so the server knows that we're expecting JSON in return. Then finally, we'll take what the server gives to us, and we're going to make sure that it's converted to JSON like so. 
And then once this is done, we want to update our status. So we say set stripe status. Uh, if the status is okay, then we'll say it's up. And if it's not okay, we'll say down. And then now we have set our state, but let's actually use it as well. So we're just gonna make a very simple box down here in our JSX. And we're just gonna say stripe is, and then stripe status. Let's save that. Open up a terminal. Let's make sure that our backend is running. And then let's go to our front end, make sure this is running correctly as well. So we're gonna stripe apps start. I'll hit enter, which will open up a browser. It's gonna ask me to select which Stripe account I wanna use. Let's use this one. Then I will navigate over to the customers. And here we say, boom, you saw it said Stripe is down and then it really changed to Stripe is up because it started with a default down and now up. Which means that if we go back to our node backend, we'll see we got a request received and we printed out okay as well. Great, awesome. So now this works, which is great. However, there is a problem here. The problem is that this health check route can be hit by absolutely anyone. Now, while that doesn't matter too much with a simple health check like this, uh, this if you do want to do some business logic on your backend, you want to make sure that the only people that are hitting this route are coming from a Stripe app. Now, luckily, there is a way to ensure that people that anyone that hits this does come from Stripe, and we're going to look into that right now. If you've ever built a webhook integration with Stripe, then you might know this. This is We're basically gonna be reusing a lot of that. We're gonna be sending a signature from our front end to our back end, and we're gonna be verifying the signature on the back end to ensure that only the right people have access to this. So let's start by fetching something very important, which is gonna be our Stripe app secret. This is very similar to a webhook signing secret, but it is retrieved in a slightly different way. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to stop this, which is the Stripe app start. And we're going to say Stripe apps upload and hit enter. So we're going to say, yes, we want to proceed. This is going to package everything up and upload to Stripe servers. Don't worry about this upload step. This is not going to make anything public. This will just upload it to your test account, which is what we need. I'm going to hit enter now to open up the dashboard, which is what we need in order to get our app signing secret. So let's close this. And then here on the right in the little ellipsis, we'll click on that and just say signing secret. Click on that and here it is, newly generated just for us. I'm gonna copy this, go back to VS Code, paste this in, save, done, perfect. Now let's actually use that in our server. Going over to our server, there's a couple of things that we're gonna to need to do here. For starters, this app.get, well this get request can't really be a get anymore because we're gonna require certain things from our front end, like a signature. So we're gonna start by changing this to a post. Next up, on the back end, we're gonna want a signature, which is gonna come from our front end. So we're gonna say signature is rec.headers stripe signature, like so. And we're gonna acquire a payload. So we're gonna say a payload equals json.stringify user ID, which is going to be rec.body.user ID, and an account ID, which is rec.body.account ID. So these don't exist yet, but we're going to add them on our front end in just a moment. Now it's very important in this payload that the order is kept in exactly this way. So we have to start with our user ID and have our account ID next. If these are not in the right order, then you might see your verifications fail. So we have our payload. Next, we want to grab, we're gonna start by using a try catch statement over here, like so. And in our try, we're gonna say stripe.webhooks.signature.verify header. This is the function that's gonna verify that the header sent from our client is from the Stripe apps dashboard front end. So in here, we pass in the payload we pass in the signature, in this case sig, and we're gonna pass in our secret that we just, uh, we're gonna pass in a secret which we just defined. So it's gonna be process.env.stripe app secret. It should be stripe app secret, let's just make sure. Yeah, stripe app secret, okay. Save that, and then let's move on. In our try catch, if there is an error, let's log that so we know what's going on. And we're gonna return 
res.status to 400, as in not allowed. And we're going to, or an error has been made, we'll say there's an error, and that is e.message. Now, what's going to happen here is that if the signature verification works, then we'll just simply fall through and we'll start doing our usual is stripe up logic. If it doesn't, then this will actually shortcut, short circuit, I should say, and stop the whole thing from happening and send back an error instead. So that's our server. Let's now work on the front end. So let's go back here to our get status function. Now, the first thing we're going to do is just remember we need to have this be a post because we changed it from a get to a post. And we're sending in a new header. If you remember correctly, we have the Stripe signature header. Now, what we're going to have here is something very diabolically clever, which is a helper function from Stripe, which is going to be called import fetch Stripe signature. And this is coming from at Stripe UI extension SDK signature. It all even all cracks for you. That's great. This is an async um, function. So we're going to say async, sorry, await fetch stripe signature, like so. And then we're missing one more thing, which is that we need to set a body because we require the, a, uh, the user ID and the account ID. So we're going to add in something new here. It's going to be body, say JSON dot stringify and this is going to be the user id and we need the account id now this is the user that is currently logged in and the account that is currently logged in luckily we have access to both these things right here in our code let me turn off the terminal uh, within this user context object right here which is now being highlighted so let's say user context dot Oops, dot ID. And we'll say question mark here just in case user context is not defined. And the same here, user context dot account dot ID. All right. So now this is going to send the Stripe signature. This is going to post. And this is going to send this a body with the user ID and the account ID as well. So let's test this out. Let's go back into our code here. Let's restart our backend server. Let's run Stripe apps start again. Oops, something broke. Oh, my bad. I put a semicolon rather than a comma. Let's try that again. Okay. So let's go back to Chrome. We, what we can do here is just refresh. We don't actually need to hit enter again. Oh, Stripe is up. Fantastic. Let's go back here and look at our server. We got request received and OK, which means that our signature verification worked. But let's see what happens if we mess this up. So if we say uh, we don't have user ID at all, so let's comment this out and just replace this with like, user one, two, three, which is clearly wrong. Let's save this. And we immediately get an error, as you can see, which is great. This is our server basically saying, we know nope, this didn't work. You found an error. And if we go back to our code here, our front end, we'll see Stripe is down because the status was not 200. We're not an okay. So let's, cha let's change this back just to make sure this works. Scroll down. Okay, back to our code and Stripe is up. So now what we have is a backend, which makes sure that only requests coming from our particular Stripe app on the dashboard are legit. And we have a front end that requests data from the backend. So I hope this video was of great help to you. Please join me in the next one where we're going to discuss how to use this secret store. See you then.